everyone, and welcome to Pro Wrestling Inside and Out. We're going to talk about Rodney's favorite subject, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. By the way, that opening, if you've not went to LiveChampionshipWrestling.com, get over there and see what's going on with Championship Wrestling, brought to you by Pro Wrestling Inside and Out. All right, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Jack, I think we just go ahead and start and tell the story, because as we're telling the story, we then can talk about it a little bit because maybe some of these things that we blamed some people for may have not have been their fault. Let's go ahead and start that. David McLean created the series while working as an announcer and promoter with Indianapolis-based World of Wrestling Association, the WWA. After seeing fans react to women's wrestling, Dick the Bruiser, who ran the WWA, believed that Indianapolis audiences would not be receptive to a wrestling promotion featuring female wrestlers and dismissed the concept as an unprofitable novelty. Undeterred, McLean went to Hollywood and posted casting notices in the Hollywood Reporter and Variety, leading to over 500 women showing up for auditions at the height on Sunset. The first auditions were at Gold's Gym, and the dozen finalists selected trained for six weeks at the Broadway Boxing Gym at 108 and Broadway in South Los Angeles, then the neighborhood of Watts. McLean hired professional wrestler uh, Mondo Guerrero to train them and later brought in wrestling veteran, wrestling veteran Cynthia Peretti, professionally known as Princess Jasmine, to take over from Guerrero. Peretti also wrestled in the series as Pepper. McLean partnered with the television distri distribution company, Independent Network Incorporated, INI, headed by former Lormar Telepictures executive Irv Hollander. Hollander's previous credits included producing Gumby, love some Gumby, yeah. which was revived about the same time. It was through Hollander that McLean met uh, Meshula Reculus, and chairman of Rapid American Corporation, a conglomerate which included ownership of the Riviera Hotel and Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. Reculus arranged for the Riviera Hotel to host GLOW. Hollander's firm was in charge of distribution in a joint venture with a New York City-based syndication uh, syndicator M.G. Perrin, and McLean headed the venture. Matt Simber, who had recently directed the movie Butterfly, starring Rickless then-wife Pia Zadora, was brought in to provide creative services and direct the shows. Can you believe that 500 women showed up? 500 showed up to be uh, part of the GLOW Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. I, th I think that's amazing. All right, Rod. A number of the original dozen wrestlers moved to Las Vegas and were supplemented by local women, many of whom had been actresses or showroom dancers. Laurie Thompson, a Las Vegas attorney and lead dancer in the Follies uh, Bergeri, I'm, I'm just guessing at that. Bergeri. All right, there you go. Uh, at the Tropicana, played Susie Spirit. Thompson recruited others. Uh, creating and recruiting a chain of other friends and dancers. One of those, Laurelyn, Laurelyn Palmer, who played Colonel Nino Tachka, uh, took the, over the training of the new women. According to David McLean, the first actress hired was Janine Bassoon, uh, Bassoon, I guess, who was working as a Philip Botanist. Uh, yeah, that I, I destroyed that one too at the time. <laughs> and was the kid was a, as a character. Hollywood. Basson uh, was uh, also appeared in Playboy, part of the pictorial title Lethal Women. She went on to do stunt work and started her own wrestling company, uh, Hollywood Productions. The show was introduced in 1986 at the NAPTI convention. Uh, following the successful initial sales of 30 major television markets in the United States and six other countries, uh, McLean bought uh, bought into Jackie Stallone. Uh, McLean bought in Jackie brought in Jackie Stallone, mother uh, Syl Sylvester Stallone. Um, <laughs> I messed that up again. McLean bought in Jackie Stallone. 
who is the mother of Sylvester Stallone and played uh, Kayfabe Blow Owner and the manager of the uh, Good Girls. Kitty Burke, as Aunt Kitty, was the manager of the Bad Girls. Stallone had been promoting a physical fitness gym uh, for women only. The syndicate syndicated Glow television show was produced for four seasons for 1980 to 19 uh, to 1986 to 1990. Seasons one and two were shot at the Riviera on Saturday afternoons with the casino crowd. McLean and the majority of the original cast left the company in a dispute over the uh, denom uh, domination of uh, of low brow and blue hee haw style comedy climber uh, had infused into the uh, the show. McLean's new promotion became the powerful win women of wrestling. Season three and, uh, three and four were filmed at the former warehouse building approximately three miles east of the Riviera Hotel, which would later be the Harley Davidson outlet. Clymer or Keimer cast the new actress to play the other wrestlers. Is that Simber? Simber. Simber, okay. Simber. Uh, okay, here's the, here's the thing that we, we've talked about. We talked about Dave McLean. We talked about the hee-haw stuff. He left the company because he didn't like the hee-haw stuff. He didn't like the hee-haw style of comedy uh, within the show. Yeah. Um, so he did not want it uh, to uh, be done. Uh, I think I think we may have to uh, apologize to him because we thought we thought he was the one that would come up with that. But anyway, let's uh, move on. The wrestling they they wrestled appro approximately eight matches per live event. They showed it. They showed itself different from Vince McMahon's World Wrestling Federation, and that the venture held live events only for the purpose of taping television program versus running live shows in various cities uh, locations each week. They had actual television uh, season consisting of 26 episodes that were each rerun once to comp complete the year, with a total of 104 episodes produced and aired. As Simber focused on producing, Andrew Hecker directed later episodes. A fifth season was being shot when the show went off the air in financial turmoil. Hecker, Heckner, Hecker, Hecker directed an initial revival attempt in 1991, which became the pay-per-view special Go Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling Canvas Carnage, which included clips from every performer in the company's history, including McLean's return as host. McLean later created w Women of Wrestling, also directed by Hecker and syndicated to TV stations by MG. And did you say that was Perrin? Perrin. In 2000, McLean performed as the ring announcer and host for seasons one and two. McLean's announcing voice was replaced in season two to add more comedy feel to the episodes using Miles Headlock, a computer-generated knockoff of Max Hedrum. Yes, I remember that very well. And a motor mouth, Mike Morgan, who sounded a lot like Howard Cosell, and I remember that very well as well. Steve Lance was the senior referee in season two before becoming Glow's commissioner in season three and four. He was the regular uh, recipient of a Glow Girl beatdown in season two. Uh, Johnny Carfella was Johnny C. was the ring announcer for seasons three and four, and the figurehead uh, owner buying David McLean's interest in a storyline also served as company's manager after the departure of McLean in 1987. Each of the Glow performers had their own rap song, personalized lyrics using the name backing soundtrack. Uh, it was shown on videotape prior to that wrestler's match, similar to other wrestling promotions' use of wrestler-specific entrance themes. This gimmick may have been influenced by the Chicago Bears Super Bowl Shuffle. The music uh, for the rap was written by uh, Hank Donick, who did the music for the first two seasons, supervised by Morris I. Diamond. Music for seasons three and four was created by Brian Bogle and Ed Raba under the name Music at the Wang. <laughs> well, you set me up for that one, didn't you? <laughs> Hecker gave each performer personalized digital video effects, including 3D effects and personalized logos with Ann D. Bilblis as graphic designer. The but Globe Company. This, didn't they? they what? They had some names in this thing. Oh, I'm telling you. The Globe Company had been has been owned and operated since 2001 by Ursula Hayden, who portrayed Babe, the farmer's daughter, Princess of Darkness, and Donna Matrix. Her first venture with Glow was a sold-out 
2003 live event in the El Rey Theater in Hollywood, California, followed by a direct TV pay-per-view produced by Ursula Hayden and Johnny uh, Caffarella, GLOW's ring announcer for seasons three and four. In April 2012, GLOW returned to Las Vegas for a show that reunited former GLOW participants, Hollywood, Babe the Farmer's Daughter, Grim, Grimlina, Lightning, Thunderbolt, uh, Melody Trouble Vixen, Ashley Cartier, uh, Godiva, Daisy, Corporal, and Corporal Kelly. Kelly. The show also featured new GLOW wrestlers, including Sarah Deathray and VH1. Then later in 2012, she appeared in the documentary GLOW, the story of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. A very good documentary, too, by the way. It premiered in, uh, on April 27, 2012 at the Hot Docs Canadian International Documentary Festival and won the Best Documentary Award at the San Diego Comic-Con Film Festival. In 2017, after a few years of working with writers Liz Flayhive and Carly Minch, Glow, a scripted company, drama, based, uh, drama series based on the actual wrestling promotion, was picked up by Netflix. Hayden now serves as a series consultant on that show. Wow. A documentary film, Glow, The Stories of the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, was released in 2012. The film was directed by Brett Whitcomb and was written by Brett, uh, Branford Thompson. It featured the music of ESG. The film premiered to uh, positive reviews at the Hot Docs Canada International Documentary Festival. You think they could uh, make that simpler, by the way, <laughs> and has since been featured at the New York Magazine, LA Weekly, uh, Roger e Ebert.com, Vice Films, uh, The Village Voice, and Mental Floss Magazine. It won the Best Documentary Award in 2012 in, at the San Diego Comic Con Film Festival and the Audience Best Choice Documentary at Sidewalk Films Festival in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Glow is the is a TV series that premiered on Netflix in 2017. A scripted com comedy drama, it tells a fictional story of the 1980s professional wrestling promotion that is based on the actual gorgeous ladies of wrestling. It was created by Liz uh, Flahive <laughs> and Carly Minch. I think hopefully that's her name. And stars Allison Brie, Betty Gilpin, and Mark Marin. Hey, does, has anybody watched... The Gorgeous Ladies Wrestling. I did. I watched the first season. It was pretty good, and I never have got back to catch up with the rest of it. I think there's three or four seasons. I can't remember now. Did it get canceled? Yeah, uh, uh, they have canceled it now, but it had. I think they pretty well told the full story they wanted to tell. Okay, so you know, whatever you want to say about Gorgeous Ladies Wrestling, it did get four years, and people still talk about it today. It's incredible how people still talk about that. At four years of wrestling, uh, I, I did not realize that uh, Dave left to become uh, to do powerful women's wrestling. I didn't really uh, realize that, but uh, I guess we find out something new every day. Yeah. And now uh, Dave McLean is also behind the Women of Wrestling Revival show that that uh, had been on until the pandemic hit, and they they put everything on you know on the table, stopped everything. But uh, that was a very very good show. It was. Leaps and bounds much better than I thought Glow ever was. Yeah, Glow, we just uh, just done goofy stuff. And uh, that was way before WWE ever done the stupid stuff. So <laughs> it was, uh, you know, but, you know, it worked for them for a very small time. I can't believe that they went to the Nappy Convention and it did three. They had 36 stations lined up for it that was that was tremendous uh, uh back then you used to go to that you could take your your production or something and you could see if you could get it on television uh, syndication i don't know if that even works that way anymore I don't know. and I, I did have the opportunity to meet uh jenny by oh boy what a gorgeous woman she is and and sweet as she can be uh, it was it kind of was interesting though. They took all the wrestling people out and they brought somebody in that didn't even know how to wrestle to put them in there. Hey, well, WWE does it every day. What I'm that's what I'm thinking. That's exactly <laughs> that show is WWE of today. 
Uh, you know, it wasn't the greatest show in the in the history of, of professional wrestling, uh, but it probably wasn't the worst. I've seen stuff that was oh, no, no. probably worse than that. But uh, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Let's see what the, our uh, insiders uh, have to say. The Insider Nation. So if you are a uh, if you are a supporter of our channel, you can be a part of these videos. Michael Barr said, uh, thanks, uh, Robert, and he's, he is present. He is with us right now. Uh, Richard Hood is checking in with us. <laughs> uh, wrestling for every I read that most of the five hundred women had no idea that the wrestling was going to be legitimate. <laughs> well, <laughs> the problem was is they, well, I guess they, I guess what they thought, it was just going to be, well, we're going to stop it, and there's going to be maybe a stand-in yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what they thought. They didn't realize they were going to have to take all the balls. I always liked the, 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 the Natasha character. I always thought she was good. And uh, there was also somebody that, uh, that would wrestle as a uh, voodoo woman. Mm -hmm. Was her name Big Mama? Uh, maybe. That was my favorite one of all of it. All three episodes that I watched. <laughs> I have watched it since. So I uh, love the women from Glow. Uh, let's see. Uh, my favorite was the Soul Patrol. There was a Soul Patrol on the, on the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling? Yep. I did not know that. I don't think I ever saw them on there. Uh, I remember the farmer's daughter. I remember her. I remember her wrestling on there. Uh, let's see. Max Hedrum had not been seen uh, in that in a few years. Yeah, that was that was their version of Max Hedrum. On there. Yeah. I wonder if they got sued for it. I'm just wondering if they got sued for that. Uh, when did women actually start wrestling as like the Fabulous Moolah? Oh, they were that, that there was people before the Fabulous Moolah. Oh yeah. Oh, there was a, a lot of wrestlers before the Fabulous Miller. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're talking, uh, oh, what's some, I can't, you know, there's, they're escaping me right now. Oh, uh, well, there, there's, uh, gosh, I just uh, watched it the other night. There's a, a movie or documentary on Netflix, uh, not Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime that you can rent. It's only like $2.99. Uh, the women of wrestling and it covers women that wrestled in the thirties, forties and fifties, uh, Babs Wingo and some of those other, uh, ladies that, that started, you know, she had three sisters, Ethel, uh, Johnson. And I can't remember the other one offhand. It's a great documentary. We had, we had actually talked about it several times yes. over here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you gotta get over, go, get over there and watch it. If you have it, uh, how many, well, Michael, you can, you can search us, Michael on the, uh, uh, you know, on YouTube, we, we've done several episodes on the history of women's wrestling back in that day. Yes. How many women from Glow went on uh, to the WWF, if any? I, I'm thinking. Uh, but, Ivory is but, the only one I, I can think of. For, for Gorgeous Ladies Wrestling, or, or did she do the Powerful Women's Wrestling? I was thinking, yeah, she may have done the Powerful Women of Wrestling. You're I right. Remember her I, being, don't, I don't remember her being on Glow now that you say that. Yeah, I, I, she could have been. She could have been Tina Moretti or Moretta or something like that. Yeah. So she could have been on there. Uh, somebody would have to check and see, but I, I'm pretty sure. I, I think Wrestling Forever said that, uh, yeah, that was definitely, uh, I think, Tina. I, I, and we know she did go on from that, that at least that yeah. that group of people. Uh, Michael Barr said, agree. It was great how she could go from Glow to Women's. But she, she was very good. Do you like her, Rodney? Do you like uh, Ivory uh, from uh, WWE? I guess it was WWF then. I'm, I'm guessing he did. I guess Rodney didn't. I actually don't remember who she is. I don't. I don't. Even, I don't even. I don't. I, I, if honestly, uh, as I said before, I watched about three episodes of Glow, and that's about no, it. No, she. It's. It says she was on the uh, Glow. Okay, so she did come from Glow, gorgeous ladies. Right? She was, you know, she was very good. She when when she finally got to uh, WWF, I thought she did a very a good job at, at at wrestling for them. I I don't know. I 
I'm gathering Tom Pritchard or somebody worked with her. I'm not for sure because, well, I think that was before Tom Pritchard would have been there, wasn't it? The way yeah, or, he may have been there, but he wasn't training at that time. Uh, let me see if I can uh, throw a picture up. Of yeah, she, she was trained by Mando Guerrero. Okay. Mando Guerrero. So she was there at the beginning then. Let me uh, see if I can throw this picture, and and, and maybe Rodney will remember uh, her when I throw this picture up. Of because uh, I always thought she was good, though. I always thought yeah, she, I did. I thought I always she was really she was good, great wrestler, and and uh, I mean she what? Now what? She was was she a Sherry Martell? No, but she was good yeah. at what she did. I, I thought. Uh, let's see if I can find her. Now, now finding her picture could be a problem. Uh, I'm not the best uh, computer uh, person who puts my stuff where it needs to be. All right, here we go. You remember her now, Rodney? Evidently uh, not. No. She was. Uh, she was good to me. She was. She was very good at what she. Did. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't Sherry Martell. You know, she wasn't on the line of cab, but no stretch of mention. But she she did a really good job. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm I'm going to go past some of this stuff. Uh, a tag team, Eva and Adore. Now I, I remember I not watch this program. Envy and Adore. Envy and Adore. I don't I don't remember them. No, I, I do not remember. And he says, uh, Rick Brooks says all he remembers is the farmer's daughter and, and Tina Morella. She, he does not remember anyone else. I uh, remember some Iraqi or Iranian lady on there. I bear, I remember, I don't remember exactly what it was that she did. Uh, but it, it didn't take long for that show to completely turn me off. I mean, completely turn me off. Well, and this is what happened. See, Somebody like Steve Kern would jump out from underneath the ring and say, population, 25. Just crazy stuff. Hee-haw, yeah. And it was. It was it was hard for me to watch. And I do believe at the same time, let me think, was that the same time that Tuesday Night Titans was on? Because that's another show I couldn't watch. Oh, I just the, that Tuesday Night Titans. Yeah, it was awful. This was horrible at that. I'm sorry. That that is that is one of those things that even though it's on the WWE network, I have never been enticed to watch again. Yeah, that was horrendous. So when I would watch, when I would take Monday, uh, what what was the show called before they went to Raw? That that Rillamon Prime Time Prime Time Wrestling. Prime Time Wrestling. I used to tape that. And I've got the I got the videos. I've got all the videos. I used to tape it every Monday night. And I took all the wrestling out and only kept the Bobby Heenan Gorilla Monsoon stuff. There's nothing else. There's no matches on it. It's just the whole video of Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. That's the only reason I watched the show. I thought the matches were horrible. But uh, but I always thought Bobby Heenan was tremendous in that. And then and then they added Roddy Piper. You remember they added Roddy Piper in the, in the in the prime time wrestling for a while, and that was that was good as well. But I, I didn't want to watch it if Bobby Heenan wasn't on it. And when they went on location with Bobby Heenan on prime time wrestling, superb stuff. It was just superb. Yeah. You, right. When they took him, he went to that he went to that western area, that western town, and he was he got shot, he got thrown out of windows. Just tremendous stuff. And see, people believe that that's just comedy. They believe that was, a, but that was Bobby Heenan being a straight man, basically. He wasn't yeah. really doing the stuff as a comedian. He was doing it. That was him. That was Bobby Heenan just being Bobby Heenan. And yeah. people think that's, uh, they think that's the reason people watch wrestling, which uh, it, it might be the reason they watch primetime wrestling. Because uh, cause almost all that stuff was from the superstars of wrestling, uh, wrestling challenge. And they had one more, one other show. I and a lot of the stuff from Madison Square Garden, Philadelphia, Boston, they would show some stuff from there. Yeah, and that was fine. I would usually usually watch that, but I always watch the Wrestling Challenge, uh, Wrestling Superstar Show anyway, and I thought it was good. But the gorgeous ladies are wrestling. Not the greatest wrestling company of all time, but uh, 
Michael Barr wants to ask this question real quick. Uh, Jack, have you noticed WWE is in front of a live audience tonight? Oh, yeah, they've been back for a couple of weeks now. Uh, Rustling Forever said uh, that uh, Primetime had three different approaches, update show, talk show, and panel show. Yeah. And uh, Vashon getting married. Um, well, that was the last time I ever watched the show. When they knocked the little man down and he lost the ring, uh, that did that did me in for the rest of the time. I didn't want to watch. Now, I did want to watch it when uh, Dick Murdoch and Adrian Donis was on there. That was a very entertaining show when they were on there. All right, folks, we're going to get off here. I want to thank everybody for uh, being a part of the show. Uh, I'm going to get off here because I bit my tongue at some point. And uh, I'm swallowing blood right now. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know when I did it, but at some point. No, we, no razor blades were used. <laughs> did it, did it, that, it was actually done the hard way. And I don't know what I did, but I have actually bit the side of my tongue. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here and uh, get some blood get some blood out of there. And I quit swallowing it. Uh, so uh, thank each and every one of you for watching the show. If uh, you enjoyed it, give us the big thumbs up. Sub sub whew, Subscribe to the page. Go one step further. Hit that notification bell. And... And watch the video down below, and it will uh, it will tell you what the, the other videos that you need. Yeah, Wrestling Forever thought it was it was underrated, uh, and it was an interesting promotion. It was We're still talking about it all these years later. So. This is true. I had to give them. People were still talking about it, and I, that was in 1986. That was many many years ago. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Uh, thank each one of, of the, uh, in, uh, the insiders. We certainly do appreciate you supporting the channel. And we will see everybody tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we'll be back here. Yes, I did get some color. I, got, I, bit, I don't know how I did it. I don't know. Just while I was talking, I bit, my, I bit the side of my tongue and it's bleeding. Uh, thank you all so much. We'll uh, see everyone uh, tomorrow night. Thank you all so much.